Hello everyone and welcome to another Iyengi Yoga Tip of the Week with me Rachel Lovegrove and this week we've got a request from Karen, one of my favourite poses, Adha Mukha Vrikshasana, that's handstand. When I first started learning this pose a long time ago I never thought I would achieve a handstand on my own and with perseverance, constant daily practice for a while I managed to get there. I still struggle with it, it's not an easy pose for me, but I love doing it. It gives me a great sense of um, release in the chest, um, strength in the arms, it turns the world upside down, so sometimes when you're feeling a bit out of sorts or you need a mood lift, hand balance is a great way to just turn everything upside down and make you feel better. Um, now, there's many, many different ways to practice it, to practice towards it. I'm not sure what Karen's problem with it is, whether it's getting up into it, whether it's staying in it, whether it's, you know, um, getting over the fear of doing it. So I've tried to come up with lots of different things, get all, the, all my things out of the toolbox for this one. So bear with me. Um, first of all, hand balance needs preparation in the arms understanding of the um, alignment of the arms with the shoulders and the hips. So poses like simple poses like Tadasana um, with Urdhva Hastasana is a really good preparation for your hand balance. And you can also, you can't quite see my hands, but you can also turn the hands as if you were pressing onto a ceiling. In fact, if you've got a ceiling low enough, you could even do this action and learn handstand upside down, which is often how we learn uh, head balance is we start beginners with the hands in the position like that, feeling the alignment through the body before they actually start to weight bear on the arms. So that's one thing you can practice is that lift. You can also do that to the wall and you can put the heels of the hands on the wall and push upwards like that and practice. You can have the head on the, on the wall like that and practice pushing the arms up. So lots of preparation in the arms is really necessary. And then linking poses are poses like, um, let me just take my jumper off so you can see the arms properly. Poses like half hand balance, uh, half arm, what am I talking about? Half Uttanasana, that's the one. Half Uttanasana, where you're pressing into the wall, drawing the hips back and upper, bod uh, upper body, upper back pressing in, shoulder blades pressing down towards the floor. Um, again, abdomen moving towards the spine tops of the thighs pressing back. So now we're starting to work on the extension of the arms and the extension of the legs together. And there's a little bit of weight bearing there as well because you're pressing your hands into the wall. So that's another thing you can do. And then of course there's um, uh, Adam Mukhashvanasana, downward facing dog. And I like to do this if I'm preparing for hand balance with my hands to the wall, with the thumb and the first finger against the wall, fingers spreading apart. So that's all good preparation. And of course, you can also do that with your hands on bricks. So you get even more opening in the armpit chest. So how to start weight bearing on the arms? Well, um, you can take a bolster if you're afraid of your head banging into the wall and practice with the hands not right up against the wall, a little bit away. And practice with the head lifted, walking in and just stretching a leg up. So any of the leg extension poses are good to practice as well, the one leg extension poses. And then you can practice the little hop. And you try to keep the swinging leg straight, like that, and then you change to the other one. So the bottom leg is bent, but the upper leg is trying to be straight. <laughs> I hope I'm succeeding. And then you go a little bit further into that with a, a bigger jump. And you just hop up and down a few times. And then eventually the leg will come to the wall and you'll think, oh, right, quick, take the other leg up. So once you get that swinging action and you get used to that, then you have to try and bring the other leg up as well. Okay, so the, the problem that we have is that we're so concerned with bringing the swinging leg up that we, sorry, I'm out of breath now, that we keep the bottom leg heavy and we have to remember to bring that leg up quickly as well. So just preparing yourself with 
swinging one leg up statically, then adding a little hop with the, with the front leg, then adding a bigger leap will help you to get the um, understanding of how to go up. It will take away some of the fear about going up, but it also prepare you physically for going up as well. Other ways you can do this, uh, half hand balance. Now, half hand balance is a really good way to strengthen the arms um, and to give you the sense of going upside down without, without actually having to kick up. So what you have to do here is again, you measure up uh, in a half Uttanasana and then your hands come down to the floor and you can step back into Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And it's a shorter dog. You bring your feet up quite high and then you walk your feet down until they're about level with your pelvis. Feet can be slightly apart or together. And then you have to press your chest towards the wall and move your elbows away from the wall. Now, if the arms start to bend, either you've got your hands too close to the wall or you can use a belt because it may just be that you need a little bit of assistance with the belt. So you put the belt on so that it's a little bit, tiny bits more in line, the elbows are more in line with, sorry, the, the belt is tight enough so that the arms are not going away from the body. Because once you put your hands down, you'll need something to resist against. So then you replace the hands down, move the feet up to start with, and then walk them down. It's a bit easier to get up that way. And then you've got something to push against with the belt. So you move the elbows out and forwards towards the thumbs, towards the fingers, but your chest comes towards the wall in the opposite direction. And then you come down. Okay, so that, was, that will help you to get the shoulder work. And you don't have to worry about kicking up. And of course you can use the belt to help you go up as well into the full hand balance. And there's many other things that you can do. You can have a, a lift under the wrists if you've got wrist problems. You can also use a chair. Um, and the chair needs to be stable enough for you to put your feet on. So let me show, I've got two chairs here. This one's got plastic feet, so it tends to slide. This one's got rubber feet, so it's nice and secure, but you can put the chair against the wall so that it's not gonna move. Um, and there are two ways to do this. I'm gonna show the e slightly easier way. Um, <clears throat> and that is, you put your hands down as if you're gonna do your dog pose, and then you bring your feet up onto the chair head down and then practice lifting one leg straight up and then the other leg straight up. Don't twist your hips because that's dangerous. You've got to keep the pelvis facing the, the front and then you can step down and what have you. Now, finally, I want to show you different hand positions. Um, if you've got fairly straight elbows, and what I mean by that, you haven't got these hyperextended inner elbows, where the arm, where this bulges out, you can turn the hands this way. It makes it a lot easier because it, it gives more opening here and it move, helps to move the shoulder blades in. This way is the classical way with the fingers pointing straight forwards, but you can also turn the hands slightly out as long as you've got the straight elbows. If you haven't got straight elbows, that will make this more extended so you don't want to do that you in fact you want to turn your hands slightly in and the other thing you can do if you've got wrist problems let me just get a mat to show you this now i do have wedges i have wooden planks and i have foam wedges um, which i use when my wrists are uh, not good but you can make a, a wedge with a folded mat as well and you fold it like this and you put it down and either put the heel of the hand on top like that, which gives you a bit, bit of a space here in the wrist, or this is really nice. You turn the hands out completely, as long as you've got those straight elbows. Heel of the hand is on the lift. And then when you go up, 
you'll find that there's a lot less pressure in the wrist. You can really lift the arm bones up. It's a bit like doing dog pose on bricks, um, where you've got that elevation to help the shoulders move in. Okay, so I hope that helps you to enjoy practicing towards Adho Mukha Rikshasana hand balance pose. Let me know any questions. Let me know how you get on. Thank you very much.